Good morning. Welcome to those who are here this morning. Welcome to everybody who is watching from online. I suspect when I woke up this morning and saw all the rain, I thought, do you know what, if you want to stay at home and stay dry, that's absolutely fine. Um, but for those who have come out, gold stars for everybody who <laughs> is here today. Um, so for those who don't know me, my name is Cliff. I'm one of the curates of the parish and then a little bit later on um, Sheila will be bringing us God's Word. We'll be following the Green Book so hopefully you've got that at home and we will just go through that and I will guide you through the service. So let's just take a moment of quiet as we come together to worship this morning. Loving Lord, we thank you that we can worship you openly. We thank you that we can sing your praises. We thank you that we can come to you in prayer. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to hear your message for each one of us this morning. Pour out your blessings on all those who are worshipping you this morning, whether it's here in this church or across the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. We're going to start our service on page three, page two of your green books. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We come to a time of confession where we say sorry and Sheila a bit later on will be talking about God restores and part of that restoration is receiving his forgiveness. Jesus says repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand so let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse each one of us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. And we're going to praise God in our singing now. We're going to sing number 200, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And if you're able to, can you please stand? <laughs>
continue our service on page four of your green books. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm set for today is Psalm 65. It is on page 580 of your Pew Bibles. But Psalm 65, I'll just give you a minute to find that if you are at home. <coughs> so let's say this psalm together. Praise awaits you, O God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God our Saviour, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the turmoil of the nations. Those living far away feel your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades. You call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your hearts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I'm going to ask Sue to come and bring us our readings, and then Sheila will come up and bring us God's word. morning. We have three readings this morning. The first is from 2 Timothy and its various parts of chapter 4. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defence, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, 
and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 18. It's verses 9 to 14. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like these other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God, for all those that exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And our last reading this morning comes from Joel 2, and it's verses 23 to 32. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain, and the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locust and the young locust, the other locust and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And afterward I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heaven and on earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Um, as Cliff said, my name's Sheila, and I am bringing this reflection to you this morning. Let's just have a few moments of prayer. Father God, we just pray that you open our ears to hear you speaking to us today and open our hearts so that we can respond to your message to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. First of all, as normal with me, I'm going to give you a brief background to the prophet Joel. Well, not much is known of Joel. He was one of the minor prophets and he lived several hundred years before Jesus. Israel had gone from being a powerful, economic and a strong military nation to a defeated and conquered nation who was subject to the laws and rulers of foreign power. There was not much freedom and pagan rulers who knew nothing of God's holy laws told them how to live, so Israel was in desperate need of restoration. Restoration. What a powerful word it is. I wonder what do you think of when you hear that word? Well, I looked it up in a dictionary. And restore has several meanings. To repair, to cure, to make strong again, to re-establish, 
and to give back. Thinking of the word, it may be you imagine your health restored, your marriage restored, your family restored. This is a good one. Perhaps you imagine your youth restored, or perhaps not. Perhaps you imagine a career that is failing, or your self-esteem being restored. Whatever your picture is, know that God is the God of new beginnings and a God of second chances. God is in the restoration business. In our reading today, Joel brings news of this restoration, this new day. Israel had endured several years of devastation due to an invasion of a huge army of locusts. They charged like warriors. The locusts were everywhere, in the houses, in the fields, devouring everything, crops, fruits, seeds. And what was left after they gone? was just a silence, the quiet, nothing. That is all that God's people had after they'd gone. No seed for replanting, everything gone, just the quietness, a natural disaster that would last for years to come. These years, well, they are the lost years. And I wonder again, what can lost years mean to us? Lost years can be painful years, thinking of those who have lost loved ones, all the plans for their futures replaced by loneliness and emptiness. Those who live with illness in body or mind, having taken their health for granted, believing that they'll always be able to do what they used to do, but now maybe have to live with a disappointment that we cannot. Also, some of us have gone through the lost years that are selfish years, especially in thinking of our commitment to Jesus, when our faith did not run deep, when our busy lives took precedence, filled with what we wanted to pursue. Lost years, the locust years. Verse 10 tells us, Before then the earth shakes, the sky trembles, the sun and moon are darkened, and the stars no longer shine. But in the midst of that darkness, Joel saw a light from heaven, much like a sunrise after a dark night. It was hope for the people of Israel, and Joel preached that hope. No longer would God show these, allow these locusts to infest their land. Their material blessings would be restored. No longer would they go hungry. They would have plenty. Verse 24, the threshing floors will be filled with grain, the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Yet the rest restoration promised in Joel goes much further and deeper. It's about spiritual blessings, as God's spirit is poured out on human hearts. Verse 28, and afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all people. When Joel records this promise, he uses the phrase, and afterward, to indicate that the blessings of God's Spirit comes after God's judgment on the unbelieving people of Judah. 800 years later, Peter quotes Joel 2 at the beginning of his magnificent sermon in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, which we read in Acts 2. When the Holy Spirit came upon the early disciples, they began to speak with other tongues, declaring the Lord's greatness in languages they did not know. And some scoffing onlookers thought they were drunk. But Peter said, that was not possible. It was only nine o'clock in the morning. Too early to be drunk. Peter then gave them the right explanation. What happened in Jerusalem was a fulfillment of what Joel had predicted eight centuries before. And this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. We see that in verse 16 of Acts 2. The promise that God will flood us with his very presence. His spirit will take up residence in his people. 
God with us, God in us, all encompassing, sons and daughters, servants and free. It's for everyone. Jesus pours out his spirit on everyone. Joel preaches about the restoration of the old of creation. And we pray for this restoration every time we pray. Our Father in heaven, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we wait for that time to come. I'm sure you'll agree with me. We live in a very dark world. Wars, terrorism abound. Famine and natural disasters increasing. People living in fear. Materialism and self-centeredness consume us. And it's sin that separates us from God. But by his grace, it holds open the doors to enable us to walk through the door and back into his blessings. Repentance is how we walk through the door and back to his rich blessing. And the richest blessing is our relationship with our God. He is the one who satisfies us. God's word promises a light will break through the darkness because our God is a God who restores. Do you feel in the need of restoration today? What kind of darkness do you face? Loneliness, emptiness, looming illness? Do you face the darkness of a failing relationship? A family falling apart? Today, especially, are you facing the darkness of financial problems, of bills piling up, not being able to heat or put food on the table, not being able to heat your homes? Do you face the turmoil of no inner peace. No matter what it is we face, we can rejoice, for the light is coming. A new morning is on the way. God has sent his Son to bring light into our lives. God has sent his Holy Spirit to give us peace and joy. Our God has promised a day when all wars, oppression and evil will cease, and God promises to be a God that restores, physically and spiritually, in this life and the next. If you are in need of restoration today, pray and give the situation to God. Or if you'd like to, please speak to someone after the service. Or if you're at home, you can always get in touch with us and speak to someone here. Because God loves you. He offers himself to you, and he says what no one else can ever say. I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sheila, for that message. There's lots to think about in there. You know, as we look across the world, as we look at ourselves, that God is the restorer and God is our hope. So it's a difficult message, but it's a wonderful message as well for each one of us. And we're going to sing about that restoration now. We're going to sing hymn number 579, Restore, O Lord, the honour of your name. Oh, Lord, the honor. 
sit down. We're going to join together on page six by saying the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We're going to, on page seven, we're going to say our creed together, what we believe in. If you're able to, please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit for a time of prayer. <coughs> We're going to start by saying the collect together, which is on the front of your notice sheets that you were given when you came in. We say this together. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's going to be response to these prayers. So when I say, Lord, hear us, you reply, Lord, graciously hear us. Restore, O oh Lord, your creation. After years of abuse, after years of pollution, we see the effects of climate change, of global warming. We see extreme weather patterns. This world is so far from the world that you created for each one of us. Restore it now through your mighty power. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, 
restore, O oh Lord, our government. As we read that psalm, it spoke about nations in turmoil. This nation is in turmoil because our government is in turmoil. Lord, we pray for stability. We pray that you will enable the right person to become leader and prime minister. We pray that they can stabilize this government and work for the benefit of all the people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O oh Lord, restore peace to this world. We pray for those areas where there is war, where there is unrest. We think of Russia and Ukraine. We think of Iran. But there is unrest in every single part of our world. There is discrimination, there is judgment, there is violence and there is hatred. Bring peace and love and wisdom into our hearts and in the hearts of our leaders so that this world will once more be at peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Restore, O oh Lord, all those who need your help. All those who need your message of hope today. For those who are struggling financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually. We all have our troubles. We all have our worries. Enable us to cast those burdens onto Jesus and restore peace in our hearts and minds. Bring restoration to our thoughts. Bring restoration to our bodies. Bring restoration to the situation that people find themselves in. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Restore, O oh Lord, all those who worship you and glorify your name. As we sit here today openly, we know there are those who worship in secret. There are those who worship in fear. For those who live in regimes who will torture and imprison and execute Christians. We pray for ourselves as we pray for our brothers and sisters across this world that that message of hope will never leave our hearts. That your light will always shine in the darkness. And in those moments, when we feel like there is no one else, we can turn to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us.
And Lord, we pray for Cecilia and Neil as they are being ordained this evening. We know, Lord, they have both been ill recently. So we pray for your restoring power to be with them as they approach this service. And that you continue to guide them and all those you have called to their ministry. And we pray for all these prayers through the power of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So gather in all our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Katie back down to bring us our notices. morning. There was a lot in the scriptures, wasn't there, about autumn rains and flooded furrows. <laughs> it's definitely, but it's not in church, quite right. We're dry in here after years of waterfalls and cataracts in the building. Uh, we're very pleased that we're dry in here. Uh, so this week is half term, as you are aware. Um, so there will be no house groups this week um, and obviously no after school club. But uh, there will be communion and cafe on Wednesday, and as far as I'm aware, Craft will be meeting on Thursday, and there'll be worship practice and community choir on Friday. This is partly um, <laughs> trying to stagger our holidays, so I take off time before, so the things that Bill and I run don't happen the week before, and then the things that the people who take half term off because they have school-aged children don't run this week. So uh, stay on your toes with that. Uh, I realise we've got a little bit behind with um, trying to follow up on the confirmations. There is a confirmation at um, Chelmsford Cathedral on the 20th of November. So um, if you were still looking to be confirmed or know someone who wants to be confirmed, uh, we were trying to find a date when we could all do this together. If that's not possible, we will look at the new year. And of course, just to uh, remind you that uh, the light party is next week. Um, no scary costumes, please. So you're welcome to dress up as something lovely, like a princess, or not dress up at all, or a superhero. And um, if you have any questions about that, Lee will be running that. And we will be meeting, come rain or shine, for a bonfire in the Vicarage Garden on November the 5th. Uh, this evening, as Cliff has alluded to, at half six is the ordination service. We are on all welcome. I think because there's just two candidates so I imagine that we won't be um, overflowing which is lovely because that means instead of restricted tickets as it may have been before at St Mary's Loughton uh, we can all welcome Cecilia and Neil we can put some spare chairs out if it comes to that thank you to everyone who's helped arrange that who's baked cakes who's bought cakes so just to tell you there will be cake and uh, please keep them in your prayers We're going to sing our final hymn of this morning. It's number 746. What a friend we have in Jesus. Someone who is always there for us. Someone who we can always turn to. So if you are able to, would you please stand?
please sit down. I'll just ask, I forgot this last time I was leading at 9.30, but would somebody just like to bring the offering up for us? For the gifts you give to each one of us, we give you thanks. And we pray that this gift is used for your glory and your service in this church. Amen. 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 Reminder, there is tea and coffee at the back of church. If you're at home, it's time to put the kettle on and have a cup of tea as well. We're going to finish with our blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.